I'm using this one. Hi, everyone. Is We're getting set up. No, I'm on the second. Hopefully, we'll be okay. set up in just a few minutes. Thanks for your patience. Could be. All right, folks, thanks for your patience. I really apologize for the delay. Um, we are going to get started and we will start this meeting by calling to order at 5.02 p.m., 5.03 p.m., make it 5.03 p.m. So thanks for joining. Really appreciate your time. We do these uh, SCC community meetings for the reason of making sure that we have an opportunity provided for the community to provide feedback, input, stay up to date with what's happening at WCMS, and really have that opportunity to take a look at what's being planned for that academic and financial planning for next year. Um, this presentation is really a duplicate of what we presented back in October when this effort started. And 
uh, Mr. Carvalho will be able to provide us an update as to where we stand now with the efforts for SY 2425. Good, good grief. Can't believe it's just going so fast. Okay, so to get started, we've called to order. We'll do some introductions. We'll talk a little bit about WCMS, though many of you probably already know, but we'll recap it anyway. We'll provide that academic and financial plan status update, a bell schedule update, and uh, also provide an announcement that we are taking SEC nominations through Monday. I think Monday is the 8th of April. Uh, and how to stay involved. So we've got uh, a bunch of different folks in the room right now, and I apologize if, if folks can't hear me, but they're all behind us for those of you that are online. Um, we're having a lot of fun here, so I wish you all were here with us. So anyway, uh, we've got the school community council members here, we've got faculty and staff, and we also have the PTSA here selling ice cream. You're missing out, folks. So we've got uh, a, a group of 20 people that make up the school community council. Half of them are non-WCMS members. So members of the community, if you will, parents, uh, students, and community members. And then the other half are WCMS members, teachers, classified staff, and of course our principal. So it has to be that way. It has to be 50-50 so that it is an equal, uh, if you will, council uh, speaking on behalf mm -hmm. of the interests of our school for our students' success. So we just talked about who we are. Uh, why do we do this? It's actually an act that was put into place to make sure that these opportunities were provided to the community um, for the support of the students and their academic achievement. Wanted to make sure that there was an increased community involvement in school uh, activities and certainly that voice, that opportunity to be a voice. Um, so SEC is really that vehicle for all the stakeholders to have that voice in all affairs at school. And what we do as SCCs, we meet monthly, we carry out what is considered a checklist in the SCC handbook. We provide a um, review of the academic and financial plan. Um, and we certainly are always looking for the opportunities to improve our school and uh, be a support to our administration and overall all the students here that we care about. So again, we're here today as we are twice a year. Earlier uh, in the school year in October, we did the same thing. And this is really the platform to provide all families, friends, and community members to review, discuss, and provide input for the academic and financial plans and also open discussion. Any other discussion points or questions that we can help address or discuss. So that's why we're here. So at the beginning of the school year, we also talked about where you can find last year's academic plan, which is being carried out this year. It's right on our homepage under about. If you click on that, it'll take you to the academic plan that is actually being carried out this year. This is what it looks like. The link in the upper right corner or the, the bit.ly link or a QR code rather will take you directly there as well. We talked a little bit about how it's broken down and uh, we'll make these slides available online, but essentially, this is a, a very quick and easy breakdown of sort of every enabling activity and initiative, uh, or should I, I should say initiatives and enabling activities that fall under the, and, and sort of the way the academic plan is organized. So what I wanna say about the academic plan is, as SEC, we are charged with reviewing it and providing input and recommendations. We have to actually fill out an SEC assurances form to ensure that we have done such things, that we have provided the opportunity for the community to provide input and review it themselves and make sure that all those things are taken into consideration and heard. So the academic plan is also approved by the staff. Um, and of course the principal takes the lead on all the finalizations of that plan. And he'll be uh, next to provide an update on the current status, as well as a bell schedule update. And I don't know how you wanna do this, Mr. Carvalho. Do you want to come here and sit in front of this or are you able to put your camera on and from there? Perfect. I can, I can operate right from here, but you'll have to turn your volume on. Okay. Um, then you're going to have to give me the ability to share my screen. 
I'm sorry. Bear with me. I think once I stop sharing, you should be able to share. Yep. Yep. Oh, I've never seen this one before. What is this? Um, sorry, technical difficulties. Oh, no. It's saying it is an update. I'm going to have to leave and come back. Do you, um, You're not able to push everyone. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, folks, can everyone hear me? I hope so. Um, First off, thank you everyone for taking the time to be here tonight and be part of our SCC community meeting. Um, it has, I think I put the, I think I'm sharing the wrong screen. No, this is actually the right one. No, this is not the right one. I might have to stop sharing on this screen and open another one. It looks like I don't know. Keeps opening the same one. Oh, here we go. Here we go. This is the right one. Okay, here we go. Thank you for your patience, everyone. Um, so first off, uh, I want to share with you the what we use to kind of keep everything organized. This is our Waimea Canyon School Middle School Matrix, and it has all of our um, data points as well as all of our important information. So as you can see, the academic plan documents are all highlighted here, and this is accessible to all of our faculty members. So they always have access to our documents for review, especially when we start talking about planning for future. So if I go into the PowerPoint, uh, the slideshow that I had here, uh, the first thing that I wanna show is, is our, um, close this, I don't need this open, is our uh, academic plan. And if I click on this, this will bring us to our academic plan uh, summary, which is all cleaned up. There is a version that was shared with the SEC back in the day. I don't remember what meeting that was, but it was an opportunity for the SEC to review the, the draft document and give input. And um, that was about maybe a month ago. But since then, we've cleaned up the document and we've kind of more or less finalized it into a more final draft. But this is, you know, it's a bit wordy in this, this format. So what I did was I kind of whittled it down to um, this uh, uh, slideshow that kind of highlights the different uh, uh, parts of the academic plan and what we're going to do in, in, in more direct terms. So goal 1.1 is all students experience rigorous, high quality learning that results in equitable outcomes for all learners. 
So in one area then particular we're, we're looking at is literacy. So in literacy, um, two areas that we're gonna, or two initiatives that we wanna um, highlight, I wanna highlight is uh, our participation with New Zella, New ZLA. That's basically a program to target reading comprehension, to build reading comprehension for all of our students. And uh, we're still in the process of uh, rolling this out next school year. We're kind of debating whether we're gonna do it in, in uh, core classrooms or if we're gonna be doing this during advisory. But bottom line is this, there's gonna be four articles to be done every month. And uh, based on um, empirical data, uh, the kids should level up in terms of their Lexile scores. And Lexile scores equivocate to reading comprehension levels. Um, another uh, school-wide literacy um, target we're gonna do is academic vocabulary, which will be content, content specific. So making sure that academic language is used within all classrooms, you know, possibly looking at world uh, word walls or or, or other such uh, things done in the classroom. But building the academic vocabulary of our students is a priority. Um, literacy specifically for uh, ELA, again using a smarter balance assessment ELA vocabulary to again make sure that academic conversations are being held in each classroom, um, along with uh, implementing high yield instructional strategies. Um, we're getting professional development, and we'll talk more about this later on in the plan, but looking at specific um, high-yield instructional strategies that will be utilized and looked for within each classroom um, through walkthroughs, um, as well as uh, walkthroughs and PD provided by our educational consultant, Mr. Dave Holden, and his company, AIS. Uh, we also plan to utilize, uh, uh, continue utilizing our data teams process uh, which is the DT data teams um, and our interim assessment blocks. So basically um, it's formative assessment, looking at how students are, you know, absorbing the input, the, the teaching that's happening in each classroom and their interim assessment blocks is tied to smarter balance assessment. So the interim assessment blocks is like a, a snapshot, a checkpoint of where the kids are in terms of their learning uh, for said standards. So we can target, um, Common Core Standards uh, for ELA and uh, see how kids are progressing in their learning. Um, sorry, I don't know why I think I can move it that way. For numeracy, um, we're starting a new curriculum for math. It's gonna be called uh, Ready Math or iReady Math Curriculum. Um, we were using illustrative math in the past and that's something that our teachers did not feel was highly effective or user-friendly. So we're pivoting towards iReady Math. This is something the math department felt strongly about. And we had good support from our district office, quite district office. They basically paid for the, the curriculum for, for this coming school year. So um, great for us. And it frees up some monies to do other things. Um, similar to ELA, uh, they're going to be using uh, Smarter Balance Assessment um, vocabulary content specific to continue with the academic language in each classroom as well as uh, utilizing the high yield instructional strategies from Dave Holden and also the data teams and IABs interim assessment blocks uh, to prepare our kids for the smarter balance assessment at the end of the year. Uh, science, uh, we're also looking at a new curriculum. Uh, we were using Amplify in the past and uh, now we're gonna go to Open Sci Ed. Um, and there's a lot of professional development that has uh, or still needs to take place, but we had our first opportunity uh, I believe this past Wednesday, where we had district office come down with the trainers and uh, had a training session specifically for our teachers here at our school. Um, they will also continue with the uh, high yield instructional strategies uh, that were going school wide, um, as well as using the NGSS interim assessments to monitor progress um, uh, to their standards. And the NGSS means uh, next generation science standards. And I'm sorry if I'm using uh, any kind of letters or acronyms and stuff. The DOE has tons of them. In fact, I think there's like a worksheet that shows all the different ones. Um, but that's for science. Uh, enable activity four is inclusive practices and academic supports for our students. And uh, as of right now, you know, we have a, a loose um, response for intervention. That's what RTI stands for, response for intervention. Basically, this is for those students that are behind in, in terms of their learning. So they may be two, three, four, sometimes more grade levels behind. Um, you know, sometimes we have kids that are coming to us at the level of kindergarten, um, you know, where they haven't learned all of their phonics or, or um, high frequency words. 
So, you know, we need to provide an opportunity to bridge the gap and close the gap for our students. Um, another thing that we want to focus on is study skills within um, the RTI blocks um, so that, you know, kids uh, utilize their planners effectively. That's another thing. Planners are going to be utilized in every grade level, and they're going to have opportunities to learn how to be more prepared um, and uh, be more um knowledgeable about how to prepare themselves for school and the next level when they get to the high school. Um, as of right now, the plan is to integrate uh, one RTI block for every core teacher. So they'll be teaching their said um, line as well as one RTI block. Uh, EA5 is the student transitions and structures for middle school level learners. And when we talk about transitions, we're talking from elementary coming into the middle school. So from fifth to sixth, as well as transitions from uh, eighth to ninth. So um, definitely a lot of uh, advisory activities to prepare our kids, as well as you know inviting um, the elementary students to our campus as much as possible, hosting events, et cetera. And as part as well as partnering with the high school to ensure that we you know there's collaboration and you know getting our students to the high school campus as much as possible so that they're very familiar and comfortable with the transition in the future. Um, IDUs are inter interdisciplinary units. Uh, this is basically our advisory teams uh, coming together and trying to work amongst each other to integrate uh, ELA, science, math, and social studies in some, some way, shape, or form uh, so that there's collaboration and um, learning taking place uh, across content. Um, that's a, that's a, one of the REACH goals that we're trying to implement. Um, for next year, uh, we may start the planning process next year, but hopefully by the second year, we'll have uh, more inter interdisciplinary units uh, within each classroom. This is also part of the WASP recommendation that we needed to work on this area. Uh, goal 1.2 is all students learn in a safe, nurturing, and culturally responsive environment. So student attendance is, is a, a concern here at Waimea Canyon Middle. I think we had um, a chronic absenteeism rate of upwards of 30 plus percent. So definitely we wanna work on um, mitigating the attendance you know, of, of students not coming to school. So to address this is we have to work on our communication of attendance policies and procedures to our parents and students. Um, and when I, when I see this, I'm talking about uh, you know, making sure our attendance letters go out, we hold our attendance meetings to make sure that parents understand the consequences of students not coming to school and try to uh, work with, with them to mitigate uh, why they're not coming to school. You know, um, if it could be, you know, just supporting the parents in terms of, you know, helping them work with their kids better, setting up schedules, counselors may be involved or outside community resources, you know, as far as to, you know, unfortunately more uh, punitive measures such as petitioning the court to get involved for truancy court. Um, you know, where parents have to show up and report to Judge Myers and and uh, explain, you know, why kids are not coming to school. But, you know, that's uh, that's at the far end of the spectrum. But we definitely want to do more uh, meetings with parents and communicate that, you know, the importance of coming to school and work, to, again, to mitigate why they're not and not move straight to the punitive side of petitioning the courts. Um, EA7 is uh, Productive Student Behaviors. So one, one area that we're looking at to um, help teachers uh, with working with some of our students is professional development on classroom management. Uh, you know, definitely uh, having, having uh, you know, in place some strategies for especially our new teachers that have not taught in a middle school maybe or are new to the island, you know. Um, our current teachers, they do the best they can, but, you know, like anything, like, you know, you could have the best knife in the world, but if it doesn't get sharpened, it's not going to be the best. So that's what we want to do is continually develop our teachers and build capacity so that we can provide the best instruction for our kids. Uh, we also want to work on our advisory uh, lessons to make sure that it's very um, inclusive of, of uh, thinking about social emotional learning, study skills, as well as any um, future needs that come up, uh, you know, for for learning in, in our school it could be, you know, addressing um, fights on campus. It could be addressing drugs or alcohol or um, tobacco use, vaping. Vaping is a huge issue on our campus. And I understand it's, it's, it's an issue for a lot of campuses across the, the nation. So, you know, just taking that time to provide any and, and all um, uh, 
knowledge for our kids so they make better choices, right? Uh, our SEL program that we're looking at is going to be Choose Love, and it's it's further on in the no panel, no Naho panel, ao, but it's it's definitely something new to our school. But we want to integrate Choose Love into our our SC, into our SEL uh, for advisory. Um, PBIS is um, Positive Behavior Intervention Support. Uh, we use PBIS Reward to to provide points for our students, and that's based on you know them doing what they should be doing um, or teachers rewarding them for going above and beyond. Um, but they can cash in these points for tangible items such as stickers, food items, and other. I mean, we we just um, bought uh, Macy's cabinets. Our, our registrar, Ms. Penny Shimamura, she's also our um, leadership teacher. Uh, she, she spearheaded this opportunity to go ahead and, and buy these um, display cases so that we can display the rewards that kids could earn within um, the PBIS store. And, you know, we all have some pretty big ideas to try and get the kids more, um, you know, vested in coming to school um, and working towards, uh, you know, earning these rewards. Um, another thing that's there for productive and behaviors is intramural sports. Um, we just started, uh, or we didn't start, but we just brought back intramural sports in quarter three um, basketball. And I think we had maybe eight teams that participated and they were mixed groups, female, male, different grade levels. Um, and uh, we know there can only be one. So there was a champion and that champion got to play our staff and unfortunately our staff lost um which good or bad for our kids but you know they they ended up uh, playing cheapest kamakaheles champions and that's the first time ever we've had an inter middle school um basketball championship game um unfortunately Waimea lost this one and i've 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 got a lot of flack from the principal over at ckms about this you know uh but i know next year hopefully or even in quarter four we'll have volleyball uh, maybe we'll go down and play their champions from volleyball but uh yeah we're this we're going to continue this and hopefully we'll win one here or there and uh, i'll get to uh you know speak my mind <laughs> uh cadre this is um basically made up of um uh, counselors our school-based behavior health team, our uh, student services coordinator and administrators. Basically, we look at students that have uh, behavioral or academic needs, and we do our best to uh, look at supports that are either school-based or um, community-based um, to provide the, the scaffolding for their student success. And it could look a different, you know, all kind of different ways. It, it could, you know, be school level counseling as low as school level counseling to referral to a treatment center. Um, so that's what happens in, in our cadre meetings. Uh, enabling activity eight, uh, Open Ao is uh, basically looking at our HAF framework, which is, you know, tying to the cultural aspect of our community, sense of belonging, place, um, and we uh, hopefully will continue with the field trips, uh, you know, maybe at some point uh, to um, Alacoco, uh, you know, which is the um, uh, the fish pond, the Nihuni fish ponds uh, in, in, in Amifra, the Nawili Wili um, area, as well as, uh, you know, going out to the Lois at, at Kumano Farms. So, you know, being able to take the kids out to experience what it's like, you know, to be in our, in you know, in the sense of place, because we are from Hawaii, we should know. Um, goal 1.3 uh, is all students uh, graduate high school prepared for college and career success and community and civic engagement. Um, this is where we look at um, the career explorations and, you know, connections with the community to uh, come in or we go there to expose students to the different opportunities for career in uh, college. So career day is one example of how we expose the students to various careers and we bring in the community um, to expose kids to what's out there, you know. Um, we want to continue our collaboration with Waimea High School. Uh, we participated with their uh, career um, career day or career, I forgot what it was called, but it was like a career day. So our kids were able to go up to the high school and our eighth graders only were able to go up there and experience um, what the high schools were experiencing. We also want to uh, create more career exploration opportunities through classes. Um, right now, I have uh, an opportunity for a free curriculum um, that deals with career exploration, and we'll be using that for our transitions class. We're going to relabel it or re rename it to career explorations um, slash transitions. 
Uh, we also want to integrate more field trips to bring kids to see what's out there. Um, we do have uh, monies that have come down from CTE or career technical education um, where we can either bring people in or bus our kids out um, as, you know, and then bringing in the guest speakers. So, you know, definitely a push uh, to expose students to more college and career readiness. Um, and, you know, we're going to continue to build that program. Uh, enabling activity 10 is our K-12 alignment, um, academic background and skills. Again, we this all drives towards advisory where, you know, they're going to learn study skills, tech, test taking skills, and integrating our general uh, learner outcomes, um, you know, for our students to be more prepared, again, for that next level. Um, enabling activity 11 is teacher professional development uh, and growth. Uh, Aside from all of the PD that we need to provide for our new curriculum, I also want to point out um, the uh, instructional strategies uh, using our provider, Mr. Dave Holden, for AIS, where we target uh, really three areas, which is teacher clarity. Um, that is really, you know, painting the target, uh, making sure students understand what it is that we want them to learn, as well as success criteria. Just some examples, you know you know, for them to understand, you know, what does it mean to be proficient, you know, or go above and beyond, et cetera. Um, you know, hard for us to hit a target if we don't know what we're aiming for. Um, academic conversations, you know, that's the opportunity to have collaboration within the students, um, you know, get them talking. They call it, uh, uh, I think Mr. Holden uses the term um, academic volley or academic volleyball, you know, being able to pass the ball or pass the thought, you know, to from student to student and build on the understanding and, um, you know, hopefully then build the understanding for everyone around them, yeah. And cognitive engagement is making sure that all of our activities are rigorous and meeting the standards for Common Core. Um, you know, making sure that uh, teachers, uh, you know, get this type of instruction, uh, professional development, so that we can bolster instruction and, you know, um, in turn, raise our achievement scores. Um, EA 12 is support staff training professional development. Um, this is specific to Blue Line Solutions. This is this is what my push is, is to um, get our staff trained to address an active threat situation. Uh, I'm not, uh, you know, talking with the faculty and staff, they've had training in Alice. That's a different type of, of um, active shooter training, but Blue Line Solutions is a local company that... Uh, um, comes to the school and really, you uh, you know, takes a look at the facility and provides um, a more uh, comprehensive type of training that really takes takes into account what we have here. They also provide an opportunity for live practice. So in other words, um, there'll be some scenarios where, you know, teachers will engage with, with the trainers in active situations where they'll have to use items to, you know, deter, defend, um, as well as, uh, you know, utilizing um, systems learned, such as uh, the whistle system, um, to signal a threat and what to do in that situation when we have to, you know, run. Um, that's usually the number one thing is just to get out of the situation. Um, you know, there is no, there's no um, set way to deal with an active threat because it evolves so fast. And I feel that this is why we really need to bring this to our staff so that we can best protect and prepare for um, any kind of active threat situation. EA 13 is an aligned operational and management process. Um, this is based communication of uh, uh, the initiatives um, or the plans uh, from administration to the faculty and staff. And one of the number one ways that we're doing it uh, this year is through our Monday message. And our Monday message is very inclusive of everything that's going on for the week and the week, the, the next week. We have a landing page that has all of our Monday messages that um, you know we can always refer back to to see what, what happened on certain weeks. But to me, it's an opportunity to communicate a principal's message, um, to share what, what's going on for the, for the week and to give some reminders uh, to staff to communicate to students. Um, at some point, you know, I do want to do a more video type uh, message for our kids, at least maybe once a week or once a month, maybe. Um, but that's that's still in the works for me. I just have to find the time to get that stuff done. Lynn, am I good on time? I keep talking. That's why. Are we good? Okay. 
Um, the newsletter is, a, is another tool that we use um, to communicate what's going on here at Waimea Canyon Middle. Um, you know, so, you know, I do a principal's message uh, for each letter and I'll be continuing to do that. The website is another tool um, that communicates what's going on here to Waimea Canyon Middle, as well as um, social media um, that's done by our PCNC, Miss uh, Julia Digman. Um, so, you know, the, the EA 13 is really just communication of the initiatives and what we're trying to get done here at Waimea Canyon. EA14 is a collaborative planning and decision making, um, and this is really driven to the SSC meetings, such as the one we're having right now. You know, that's an opportunity for me to give um, monthly updates at every meeting uh, to see where we're at, as well as, you know, get feedback from the SEC to see what I need to do better or how I can communicate more effectively. So that's why that's there. And then EA15 is our parent family involvement and engagement. Um, you know, our Title One Parent Engagement Nights, this is an example, our family movie nights, band concerts, you know, and any opportunity to engage the community and bring them into the school. Um, so in a, in a nutshell, those are the highlights of each of the enabling activities within the academic plan. Um, once this is complete and um, approved by Mr. Hamada, we will repost this onto our website. Um, Alisa, Alisa will be posting the summary um for you know anyone to go and check out if they had any questions or concerns you can always reach me at the school to to ask more specific questions but that's it for the academic plan i'm not sure if there's any questions from the group here or anyone online nothing in the chat okay and, and uh, I just want to speak a little, little bit to the process, process. Um, Lynn, if I may. Yeah. So the process of how we even got here um, was, uh, if I can go back to the matrix. How do we get out? So if I go back to the matrix, um, Back in February, we had an opportunity to meet as a group of, of uh, teachers. Um, we broke out into five groups and they were able to go ahead and give us input. So if I click on one of these sheets, for example, um, they were able to review the academic plan uh, draft and they were able to give me um, input um, so that I could add um, some refinements to, to the plan so that it was more of their voice, uh, not just admins um, or district office. So um, we took that input in consideration when we finalized the plan, as well as the input from the SEC, um, I want to say about a month ago. So I just wanted to point out that there was collaborative uh, processes in place. Um, this, you know, we can always refine processes, but I just wanted everyone to know that there was um, opportunity for faculty input into this plan. Um, with that said, again, any other questions? One here? Teachers, anything you guys want to say? Okay. All right. Um, I was just going to say the, the, we've been, we're placing a ton of uh, emphasis, uh, especially Ray's been preaching that to us uh, as a staff on the instructional strategies. And so, I think a big focus for the school is engagement for students and trying to engage them more in the classroom. And so I know a lot of teachers are trying to individually take ownership of how can I in my own classroom specifically engage my own kids more. Um, like for my class this year, I thought I was engaging them more with labs and projects, but it's still my scores for this year and engagement were low. And I was like, man, what the world? I thought I got better. And, uh, but I think as a school, we're getting kind of taking a more of a unified effort to really dive into what does that mean to engage our kids uh, academically. And uh, so I like where we're going with that. I know a lot of it is inquiry based, which is like we're trying to get it where the kids are talking more in class, collaborating together, having discussions together as classes. 
um, instead of teachers just teaching direct majoritively. So it's a challenge for me as a teacher, but I think it's a good direction for the school and I'm excited about it. Um, so uh, there's a lot of work being done with those, with uh, professional development and instructional strategies that seems really like specific and aimed or like it seems grounded for the whole faculty. So um, yeah, a lot of good being done there. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Singer. Okay, so that concludes the academic plan presentation part. Uh, I just want to say a few things. There's okay. there's really, that was probably one of the most comprehensive academic plan overviews that I've seen and heard. Because for me, I don't have a DOE background. I tell everybody that all the time. And it's very hard for me to follow all the acronyms and understand what should be happening. Um, what I heard is a lot of unified facts which is really a wonderful thing to hear. I heard feedback from staff. Um, I'm hearing, you know, the Choose Love program, which is really great for changing the feeling and environment, um, the kids feeling safe. Uh, there's just a lot of different things, especially when I hear things like uh, the staff really wanted to change the math program to something that they felt would be better. And um, that's being something that's adopted in our new academic plan for next year. So. I find it very exciting. And if anybody has questions about this academic plan or wants to provide feedback, this is what this platform is for, to do just that, provide your input, ask your questions. Um, this is our opportunity to do that and be, our, be the voice um, that should be heard from the community side. So that's all I wanna say about that. And I know you need to talk about the bell schedule. Thank you, Ms. Watching. Okay. So um, now that we have talked about the academic plan, now we're gonna kind of dive into the bell schedule. Um, so, you know, there is a rationale for changing the bell schedule, um, not just because it was told to me by Mr. Hamada. Uh, so, you know, um, when we looked at the Hawaii DOE strategic plan, uh, imp implementation plan from 2023 to 2029 from Mr. Hayashi, um, you know, there's specific middle school points here, you know, and um, a lot of it is looking at middle school practices um, and, you know, diving deep into these practices to to provide the best for our kids. So the bill committee met and we came up with four areas that we wanted to make sure that we integrated in every bell schedule on the island for every school, uh, middle school was one advisory uh, practices, time for advisory, dedicated blocks of time for advisory. And um, I think minimum was 20 minutes a day is what we're looking at, or, you know, definitely um, a longer block so that we can address all the things that needs to be addressed in advisory, especially our SEL curriculum, social emotional learning curriculum. Another area that we could, we had to consider was teaming. And teaming is, um, it's a middle school practice that basically uh, you know, looks at each individual student and provides um, supports through collaborative processes uh, between the core teachers as well as some elective teachers for that student's team. So in other words, this student has um, four core teachers that all plan together um, and are on the same team um, that can share positive and negative experiences about a student and you know even look at some best practices strategy wise that are effective for said student um, instead of you know having to go to different people and you know having to talk to different people about different students you know you talk to your team members for your said students and that's 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 all they serve is that group of kids so it's really tightening it up and having those those fruitful conversations and making sure we document what works what doesn't work and what needs to be done and making sure that you know people are assigned roles uh, to ensure that things do get done um, another aspect of teaming is making sure that we have that one trusted adult or advisory sorry i forgot to mention is that one trusted adult um, middle school is is all about relationships you know and and kids are going through a phase of life where there's a lot of developmental growth and not just physical, right? I mean, you see kids with the mustaches coming out, uh, you know, they start all growing their clothes within the first three months of school sometimes. And, uh, you know, there's just a lot of brain development as well. So, you know, they're going, they're, 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 they're going through a lot of 
changes and, you know, providing that support through advisory and teaming will definitely provide the kids with um, a scaffold of, of, you know, making sure that they navigate middle school <laughs> unscathed, you know, and set themselves up for that next jump in high school. Um, another area of focus was response to intervention, RTI, and that's making sure that we're able to close the gap. As I mentioned, we have some kids that are at kindergarten level coming into sixth grade. And unfortunately, that is uh, not an uncommon site. Um, so we have to put something in place to address this learning gap, you know, and it's, it's a moral imperative because if we don't close the gap, who will? Um, so definitely making sure that uh, we provide dedicated a time for students to have an intervention uh, block so that um, they can receive that much needed support to close the gap. Unfortunately, this block will take the place of one of their electives. So hopefully the carrot will be, hey, do better, try to get out. And, you know, we can go and have some exploration opportunities. But we feel because, you know, as a public school, we have to, you know, address this moral imperative to close the gap, the learning gap. Um, another one we have to consider is professional learning communities or PLCs. Um, this is opportunities for our departments to come together and discuss, plan, coordinate efforts, um, look at best practices, look at their curriculum to see how we can best serve our kids. Yeah, um, especially now that we have some you know new curriculum in in uh, math and science, we want to make sure that there's time provided for our departments to collaborate together. Um, the process that we used to, to get here uh, is we had two uh, bell schedule meetings and, um, you know, uh, basically it was opportunities to show the different proposals and look at what best, you know, meets the kids' needs or, or meet the needs of our middle school learners, um, as well as what works for the teachers. Yeah, we always have to keep that in mind. Um so out of the four proposals, you know, overwhelming, well, not overwhelming, but, you know, we had two that really st uh, stood out. And out of those two, we had another meeting and uh, we kind of whittled it down to, to one, which is a very um, a traditional AB block type of schedule with an extended advisory and study hall um, every other day. Um, Just to show you uh, the different bell schedules, um, this is our current schedule that we have now. The proposal that we more or less decided to go with looks like this. So basically you have uh, more of a traditional AB block, as you can see, with uh, an advisory um, on alternating days that's a still a same block period as, as all the others. Um, what this does is it enables the teachers to have uh, an opportunity of time to present our SEL uh, activities as well as address any study skills um, or data chats or uh, social emotional needs that our kids may have and making, you know, context to various teachers or, you know, even to our school uh, resources such as our school based behavioral health, school counselors, or even administration for support. Uh, but this is the, the schedule that we are most likely considering at this time, and it just alternates A, B, A, B. Uh, the second proposal that we're looking at was a waterfall schedule where um, there's different class periods start at different times of the day. Um, unfortunately, this schedule was not um, the highest uh, uh, liked schedule or voted for schedule. Um, so as of right now, we are leaning towards proposal number four. So that's kind of the bell schedule update of where we're at. Uh, we have two more meetings uh, that we're moving forward to uh, finalize the start time, end time, as well as to look at the various minutes um, involved. Um, so there's still a work in progress. Um, is Sam here? So Sam Moffitt has uh, worked really hard in um, getting us to where we are today. I don't think we'd be here without her. So I just want to ask Sam if there's anything I missed or anything you want to add. Yes, anything. Uh, maybe the early release on Wednesday. Yeah. Is something, and then, um, yeah, I don't know if anyone has any specific questions or anything that I can answer. 
So this is going to be a more traditional type bell schedule where you'd find this at, you know, at other middle schools, especially when it's like CKMS, it, it's pretty close to what they have. Does anyone have any questions? Any questions how we got here? <laughs> I know SSC, Ryan, you mentioned you'd like the waterfall schedule. That was brought up um, and it was discussed. Um, however, the faculty was more moving towards the traditional AB. I just know that like for both of my kids that the, the class at the end of the day uh, suffers both the teacher and that it has been <laughs> as well as the kids. So if it happens to and I think you know if you have a kid who's struggling with say math and then it's like the class they have at the end of the day, I mean I think it's a tough battle to get them to perform better because they're just done. Yeah. Yeah, we still have two more meetings to play around, play around with the minutes and, and get a final schedule. Um, so uh, the academic plan needs to be turned in by the 15th. And Mr. Hamada has told me that once we get this bell schedule approved, that can resubmit the bell schedule um, on the academic plan to get that through. Uh, to the state offices, but uh, I still I have to probably turn in our current bell schedule and just do a an adjustment later on. I just I we don't have a choice. We we need to go through this process. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's that's where we're at. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Any other comments, questions, recommendations, ideas? Thoughts? I never ever. Yeah. Well, at the end of every day, um, every other day will be advisory. Well, they'll be doing SEL. I mean, it's just that one A day that's going to be a long. Oh, it might not be an end day now. Okay, so we'll have to revisit that. We had mixed feelings about the waterfall, uh, mostly due to the behavior concerns and kind of the way the period that we had um, needed to fall. It was like we weren't going to have an A day, E day, C day, E day. Like, you know, every day was going to be different and trying to figure out where the students were on campus um, at any given time. And then having students know where they're supposed to be going at any given time was one of the reoccurring concerns with that. Um, Especially when, like, the higher behavior issues, um, and trying to locate them and follow where they're supposed to be, um, or like random people who may not necessarily be a principal will be able to pull it off, but like, other people as well. Um, and also in scheduling like outside counselors, outside services, things like that, um, was a concern with the waterfall as well, just because every day you'd have to look, you'd have to plan a whole year out, like, we could be well with the AD, but it's a little bit simpler than the with that, um, type of schedule. Yeah. yeah, and then um, yeah. there was a concern too because we're looking at hiring some half time teachers and they would not be able to teach with the waterfall. Yeah, I think the waterfall it was like if you started off on Tuesday, like on a Monday, if you wouldn't start off on Tuesday, you'd have to start off at nine. It's, it's it was like, totally random. Like, it's like every nine. Yeah, yeah it's the only thing we were wrong. Yeah. Just yeah, and we couldn't quite fit the waterfall into one day, so like they rotate every day because there's too many periods um, to put into one day. So we had to look at the long waterfall, and that's where it just got jagged. Um, but people did raise the same point that you mentioned with the, the end of the day with the students is not necessarily ideal for some, and that switching it would be a better thing. It came up. We can reshare the two like your thoughts because I didn't make the parents to say I don't know. Um, I think we discussed those too. It, it, the staff did overwhelmingly say twenty dollars to the water. Would it be possible, like, on a quarter or a semester, like a shuffle them if you keep it the block? I would say yes. I would have to turn that by the registrar. Um, but I think that is a good option to be just flexible schedules in general. Well, I mean, so if you, like, what you call, you have like one, I can't remember this, but like, no, but the, keep the block structure, but just like, you know, order two, just change the order of which one 
like a month yeah. at a side for maybe a two, quarter to lunch, five, maybe five, quarter to five. Yeah, or something like that. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Because it should not, I mean, the only thing that would happen is that that class would have that subject at a different time, but it wouldn't affect the overall schedule. Does that make sense? It's almost like reverse it. Like a total switch yeah. or something. But like maybe a semester would probably be less. It would, wouldn't change for the middle kids <laughs> if you switch yeah. it out. Only the endings and beginnings would. I think that's the most. <clears throat> I mean, also, you guys are wrestling with a lot of variables that I'm just not thinking about. So, the schedule changes are not like they're super complex just because yeah. certain kids need certain periods of certain teachers that are like said right. or uh, they're in like a higher level band or something. Um, but it is, I feel like that might be doable as a semester part. I think this is a penny question. Yeah, this is a registrar question because if you know, I'm gonna like it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I make yeah. yeah, yeah. I have grand ideas, and she goes, Ray. I just know her face and her eyes. Ray. Uh, yeah, challenge, challenge with that is, you know, overloading yeah. classes because, you know, what if these kids don't want to move out of their periods? Most teachers would be okay with having a larger class in the morning and a smaller class that would be a bit balanced or if it was students. Yeah, I think that's a conversation to have. Yeah. yeah, it's a conversation to have. Well, I'm just happy to hear the conversations. That's all I have to say. Um, I'll, I'll say, say that, that in middle school, school I, I had the waterfall the schedule and it kept me on my toes. toes. That's for sure. I did. And it really kept me on my toes. There were a few times I was in the wrong class at the wrong time. <laughs> All right. So I just want to make sure everyone online can hear me. You can give a signal or can you check the chat? If you can hear me, if you could just put a number one in the chat, then I'll know you can hear me. All right. Perfect. All right. We're finishing up. Um, the main thing is stay involved. If you know somebody that can be part of the SEC for next year, we're taking nominations through the 8th of April, which I think is Monday next week. Correct. Okay. So please nominate them. If you, if you yourself might be interested, you can nominate yourself. I encourage you to. Uh, I was a firm believer that if you want to be involved in something, you will find a way and you will make the time. So and I know y'all are out there. I think there's somebody online right now that I've I've told them that I'm going to nominate them, and they probably uh, were you know they didn't say anything, but I'm nominating them anyway. So if you know somebody that you think uh, would be a great person to nominate to continue these great efforts at Waimea Canyon, please nominate them or yourselves. Uh, we have a different flyer. You might have seen both of these flyers. They've been going out. We have a different flyer to kind of take the attention on, on students, you know, kind of entice them to want to make a difference at their school. So the QR code takes you to the same place to nominate someone. And, you know, staying involved, we've tried very hard to, to sort of provide an annual schedule. So, you know, when we're going to be meeting so you can be involved. And, and this is probably what you can expect next year with uh, the new SEC uh, that'll be put together. They'll likely put together a similar schedule so that we have a plan for what's to come in the following year, next year. Uh, and that's all I have to share. Is there any questions, anything that we missed, any topics that we didn't discuss that year that is just burning, uh, a burning desire to, to talk about that we just haven't brought up? I had one more thing. I know Remigio is not here, but she and the eighth grade team have worked incredibly hard to raise funds for banquet like since the beginning of the year like they've done like 20 different things and so when she's talked to me she's mentioned that it'd be great to get the whole school involved that we're raising eight grade banquet funds from when they first start in sixth grade um, i don't know what capacity we do that already now but i don't know if that means upping dues at the beginning of the year or like whatever we can do to help eight grade banquet earlier saving funds that we should probably go and start thinking about how to get that that system in place because i know it she was basically working a second job that's a great idea so, so just to give you an update on the discussion to have with miss miss remigio we can't we, we cannot raise student dues it's capped the yeah. new caps them however we were talking about 
uh, quarterly festivals. Yeah. And we can use the quarterly festivals to fundraise. Uh, awesome. you know, uh, grade levels selling items, healthy, and candy. You know, candy, right? Healthy for the soul. <laughs> Good for the healthy for the soul. So healthy for the soul. So you know fundraising in that sense, and that those monies you know can you know the E three will specifically sell certain high cost items, higher cost items to drive their their bank. Um. So Ashley and I are talking about this, and this is stuff we want to calendar in quarter four for next year, right off the bat, and just keep doing similar things or the same thing and just refining the process, so it's not a stretch to get things in place each quarter for celebrations you know we can do things that work and, and we know that it works and kids enjoy it and we'll get feedback from the kids about the activities that we choose or they choose but if we can get things more routine here then um you know we can definitely target the funds to go to the three banquets but i cannot raise student news yeah i don't know or we can look at you know more community donations maybe i don't I know think about like a like a sixth grade had honor tops, and we were already on sixth grade side, not on eight. And we just had those other ones. But selling them, that can definitely work. I mean, it would help. Oh, we've been, anything, we've been selling those honor tops and everything I know. else. Yeah, anything to help a grade that make the other two grades get them all somehow. Yeah, six and seven. Because it's our kids too. Those eight yeah. kids are not kids. Out of them. Well, six and seven could sell other items such as like, uh, yeah. you know, drinks, you know, and, and another grade level could sell something like Bruce of Bees, you know, and yeah. Yeah, but you know, Eighth grade could sell, you know, like cheap items. They could sell, sell right. pizza. They could, they could sell other items that are a little bit more at the higher end. But, you know, the monies that they made, you know, set them up so that they would take a bigger piece of the pie, you yeah. know, to fund the for bank. But we can continue to have these discussions, kind of figure out how we can maximize opportunities to fundraise for eighth grade students. Another option is always to ask people before donations. I mean, Kalanjo School, Kulua Elementary School, we've been doing this online fundraiser. You know, where they're just, you know, they're asking, you know, people to donate and they make like, what did you guys make like this year? 30,000. Um, that was in the spring, in the fall, we made a lot of money. Just by asking, right? I mean, that's the easiest yeah. way, right? But so what they're asking. doing is they're getting yeah. like, yeah, well, <laughs> so it's not your Facebook. Yeah, the like teachers, it, right? The teachers yeah. are getting involved, right? The teachers yeah. ask. And, and the grandma and, yeah. you know, on the big guy. And then there's the class things. participation. You know, kids have to sign up. The class with the highest participation gets a pizza. Yeah. Yeah. And, That's you know, right. so forth, right? You know, if we raise $5,000, there's a free dress day. If we raise $10,000, it's like, yeah. I don't know. They get all this incentive. Yeah. yeah. She, Another 12 hour day. She makes things happen. She makes things happen. She does. She does. Well, for everybody online, thank you again for joining. And it looks like we're ending on time. We're ending within the hour that we started, at least. Um, and I'm, oh, right now, one more thing. I just wanted to thank Lynn for leading the SEC for all of these years. She's done a fantastic job of keeping us organized and on time. So thank you. Yeah. That's with passion. You can always stay longer. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be back in five years. Okay? I'll have a sixth grader in five years, and I'll be back. Um, so you'll still be here and I know Beth will still be here. I expect everybody else will still be here. So I'll be back in five years, maybe, I don't know, four or five years. I can't remember. So, uh, but I do want to thank everybody. You know, it's exciting to me to hear all these ideas, the communication, uh, you know, the importance of all this communication um, and to see it alive and well now um, within the team and the group. It's just really exciting to hear about planning ahead, these, these fundraising activities, everything to benefit our students. So that excites me. That's why I'm here. We're all volunteers here. Those of us that are part of SEC, we're not here for any other reason than we care and we care about our school and our students. And I know everybody online does too. So if you're willing, please nominate yourself or nominate somebody that you know that has shares the same passion and uh, wants to make a difference and give back. So thank you again. We'll adjourn this meeting at 6.02 p.m. And thank you so much for joining.